and welcome to a brand new series here on the CBC called Ears of the Ground. A chance for us to introduce you to a bunch of new bands from across the country. Read from Vancouver, BC to St. John's, Newfoundland. Tonight, we stop down in my hometown, heavy metal capital of Canada, Scarborough, Ontario, to meet up with Bare Naked Ladies. Now, they're not heavy metal, they're not ladies, and they're not generally bare naked. But what they are is a young band who has just signed a U.S. deal with Sire Records. But prior to that signing, have racked up an impressive list of credits on the home front. Their homemade basement tape outsold U2's Octung Baby and Michael Jackson's Dangerous at the HMV Superstore on Young Street. They've toured the country with Corky and the Juice Pigs. They won three Casby Awards this year, of which I presented a couple of them. They found a fan in Sean Lennon and Yoko Ono with their hit song, Be My Yoko Ono, and they won, ready for this, $100,000 from local radio station CFNY. Hmm, Bare Naked Ladies, the same label as Madonna, Katie Lang, and Talking Heads. Go figure. Good luck, guys. Here they are, Bare Naked Ladies, on Ear to the Ground. Any last-minute tips, Matthew? Yeah. Before I go down? Any yeah. hints? Yeah. Any pointers from a pro? No. No? 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 Yeah. Just gotta wing it, right? You gotta experience yeah. it for yourself. Okay, here I go. <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's a midnight night, baby. Yeah, it's a midnight night. Oh, it's a midnight night, baby. Such a pain to have you hang it off my ankle like some kind of ball and chain. Put it on! You can be my Yoko Ono. You can follow me wherever I go. Be my, be my, be my, be my Yoko Ono. Oh, yeah. no. Here we go, our lives is one big one. My name is Stephen Page, and I sing. Sometimes I play guitar. I'm Andy oh. Cregan. I play uh, congas and keyboards from Scarborough, and uh, this is a beautiful day. Only the finest keyboards from Scarborough. What Andy he, play, he plays them from Scarborough, like we get a satellite link up. And there we go. <laughs> That's not two basses, just means it's a big kind of stand-up thing. My name's Ed Robertson, and I play guitar most of the time, and I sing as well. It's my hot guitar like here this. Thank you very much. Tyler isn't with us today because he's feeling sick. care of our band members and he's getting sleep and chicken noodle soup back at the hotel. 
uh, that's actually beef consomme. That's beef what. consomme, that's right. Yeah. It's whatever's available on room service, actually. We've never had room... Have we ever ordered room service before? I don't think so. I think only our manager orders room service. Oh, well, I was I was really tired, so I had to order room service. All right, nobody in the mini bar. Nobody opens the mini bar. Nobody orders room service. And we get back to the room, and Nigel's there with 14 Toblerone bars lying around. <laughs> well, I had to open the mini... I was really hungry, and I was tired, so I couldn't go out, so I ordered up some room service. I'll charge the band for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the first time I saw the band, their good looks, wit, charm, and the good craft dinner that they served me was, was, was what really made me want to manage them. I thought any band that can serve craft dinner in so many varieties is a band that I want to manage. Something we have to get out in the open now is the fact that Tyler doesn't like craft dinner. Tyler's the only one in the, the band. In the He's band. the one who could, who could best benefit from craft dinner. The, the, the options are there, it's inexpensive, it's delicious. And there's all kinds of things with it that he can do with it, and he and he refuses to eat it. Sorry. It's gross. It's terrible. It's awful. He just doesn't know what he's missing. Maybe what? that's why he's sick right now because he's, he's not eating enough craft dinner. Not, not enough craft dinner, so it's not enough vitamin K. <laughs> 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 We always get asked to describe the sound, and uh, people have called it musical stew. Um, or soup. Yeah, we call it acoustic hip-hop, because we, we take a lot of our, our influences uh, and present them very directly in what we do. Um, I call it dry white toast. <laughs> yeah, that's what we are, if anything. Um, it's all kinds of stuff, yeah. I mean, we have all kinds of influences. And it's just because we all listen to different music. No, he's not the kind of man who likes to see the world around him crumble to a ball around his feet. But he's always ready, he's always sad, he's always well aware. He's the most peculiar man you can. You know he's not the king of bedside men. He's not the Tom Jones of the next door. He's not the king of bedside men. We aren't even there anymore. With me, music has been polka, polka, polka <laughs> all my life. I, uh, I grew up listening to a lot of country and western music. Um, my dad plays guitar and sings, and my mother sings harmony with him. And it was sort of one of those, every, every time there's a big family gathering, you know, my, uh, my, my uh, uncle Keith would, would play banjo, and my uncle Robert would play guitar, and uh, cousin Mitchell would play bass. And, you know, it, it was just a, a big jamboree all the time, the Robertson family jamboree. So I, I really got a feel for traditional sort of bluegrass and folk music as a youngster and then then I turned away from it and said no rush and only rush, rush. my family gatherings really didn't have music in them though it's funny like that I wonder how much that mine was like this is this is egg salad 
This is tuna salad. <laughs> Here are the deviled eggs. Here's the uh, onion buns and the rye rolls. The green was... jello stuff. Well, no, it was. A, I don't. I don't. I don't really remember that from stuff. It was more like lots of lots of bulk, lots of protein. Yeah, you know, got a lot of that. I wish I was in your family, Steve. Uh, Just oh. as important as <laughs> I guess so. So um, when I was really young, my mom played a lot of kids' records, a lot of things with nursery rhymes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, geez, I guess. Would you say I'd say Oscar Peterson and Jack of the Stories were my sort of first sort of individual sort of discoveries. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I was talking a little earlier. Yeah, a little earlier. I'm talking. I'm talking when I was when, actually when, starting to think for myself. Yeah. But, uh, when Steve was listening to Children's Abuse, we were listening to <laughs> Jack of the Stories. <laughs> heavy. No, actually, I I've gone through many different stages. I I can't really pin it down. I guess I went through a heavy metal stage, or well, I'm still going through a heavy metal stage <laughs> sometimes. But uh, uh, I went through heavy metal. I went through some uh, you know pop stuff. And, uh, and now into to jazz, I kind of, I really got into that in high school. A lot of uh, Jack Pistorius and Oscar Peterson. We yeah. kind of went into a li uh, library and just close your eyes, stick out your hand, pick something. And then whatever you get, uh, you listen to and you follow that route, wherever it takes you. I, uh, I, I only get Jim's hand-me-down, so I'm only up to Huey Lewis right now. <laughs> <laughs> Back with the gold and I just light up the way. I turn the corner to traffic light. I count my money and then I rehearse what I'm gonna say. And like an order of fries, a quarter pounder with cheese, I love the light in your eyes. Will you go out with me, please? I am in love with a McDonald's girl. She has a smile of innocence, so tender and warm. If I am in love with a McDonald's girl. An angel in a polyester uniform. Would you like some fries with that? Doesn't try to impress anyone. She doesn't act real tough like all the other girls that I know. She don't treat me like a simple son. She's not ashamed to be the only other virgin I know. And when my hamburger's cold, I get up ready to go. She's only 15 years old, and I'm in love with her so. I feel incredibly lucky. Yeah. I mean, the the band is it's just such an such an experience. It's everything I love doing. I mean, you know, it's playing on stage in front of people. It's writing music. It's uh, you know, photo shoots, TV interviews. It's just all fun. It's all great. You know, it's the whole thing is just this this great trip. It wasn't until Jim and Andy started playing with us, and then Tyler, that that I realized, yeah, this is real. Like I'm I'm actually doing something that's real music. That's uh, not trying to be real music, but is actually as valid as anything else I've ever heard. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but at least it's valid. By mail order, yeah. we just send away for little little bits of songs. Uh, I was sure you, you, you ever see those things in, in magazines? The get your songs published. I mean, you you, know, you send you send your songs to this place, and they'll get them published. Well, they don't actually give those songwriters any money. They just give the songs to other people. So we get all the songs that people send in. Actually, nobody ever noticed it was right under the X-ray glasses. Yeah. In the back of comic books, you can send away and get a song too. Yeah. I, it's actually, totally confidential. Actually, really, um, a lot of the songs are written very differently uh but steve has written the bulk of the songs he'll he'll write the the lyrics the, the chords and the melody and uh bring it to the band and we'll we'll uh, arrange, arrange and, and shape it uh other times uh, you know uh it would happen differently maybe two of us would be working on something and uh it would be a combined effort as far as um 
one song that I wrote, I Love You, I wrote for, specifically for the band. Um, I had to have as much of, like, each section is kind of capturing each individual in the band. Uh, Steve has uh, a first verse there. He does a little spiel about food. And, uh, what else? Well, I like soup. I and I like ice cream sandwiches too. I like cheese whiz. But I love you. Oh, you don't believe me. You say all I think about myself. So let me explain. So what a way. I love me. are saying we have to do something. Um, we don't know exactly what to do yet, but what, what, what we can do, we will do. The hours go shorter as the days go by We never get to stop and open our eyes One minute you're waiting for the sky to fall Dazzled by the beauty of it all that I talk to are just because of the age and the communications are just finding about uh, so many more things that are going on in the world and they want to discover them and they also feel a need that they don't there's so much out there that they can't just find themselves in a routine for 50 years and work and retire nobody wants to do that as far as the people that I've been talking to they want to discover all these things <laughs> getting on stage and and uh, opening people up to a lot of different kinds of music because a lot of people come out and say oh yeah uh, you know I know your song be my Yoko Ono on the radio but then they come out and they hear country and they hear hip-hop and they hear jazz and you know and they hear bluegrass and they hear you know more traditional folk stuff and pop and rock you know and it's it's all there presented by the same guys get up, get on up you put your left foot in you put your left foot out. You put your left foot back in. You sing it all about. Come on! Oh, well, you do the hokey pokey and you turn your mouth all down. That's what it's all about, baby. Oh! People feel more 
willing to listen when there's humor in it. They're more, a little more into listening to the lyrics rather than, I think, if it's just a rock band, sometimes the lyrics go right over people's heads. They, they tune out of it. And you know, if there's any kind of message in what we say, it's just, it's, you know, insisting that people open themselves up to what's around. I wear a black tuxedo, a black tuxedo, a black, black, black. Oh, my God.